Hey coders, welcome to my practical training about JavaScript objects. I have been working as a front-end developer for more than 15 years, and I'm so excited to share my knowledge in a practical manner that can help you to straight jump in and to be comfortable in getting your hands into the code easily. In this course, you will learn more than what is a JavaScript object. You'll be able to deep understand how objects work in JavaScript behind the scene. In this short course, we will cover how we can create objects with object literals and many other ways as well, how we can manipulate object properties, and how we can use built-in objects in JavaScript. And by the end of this course, we will also have some practical exercises with solutions that can help you understand more the objects in JavaScript. In this course, we will learn how we can create objects in JavaScript using three different methods, object literals, constructor functions, and classes. We'll deeply focus on the first one, but we'll cover the other two and also have some exercises to have better understanding of all the three options and what are the best scenarios for each. Let's start with the first one how we can create objects using object literal. But before we do that, let's understand what is an object. So you may be familiar already with simple variables in JavaScript, like the strings, um, numbers, booleans. Um, so these are very simple data that you can store using variables in JavaScript. But we are scenarios where we have very complex data we need to store. And let's say, for example, from real, real life, we have a car, as example, okay? We want to store data about this car, and we want to store multiple data, okay? The car itself has properties. It has name, it has, for example, model, it has the year, it has the color. So these are called properties of our object, right? And also, let's say we want to store other things about this car. Let's say start, okay? The function, let's get it start. Uh, let's break, stop. So those are called methods for our object. All cars will have the same properties. For example, if you have Toyota and you have uh, Lexus, they are both of them cars. They both of them have names. They both of them have colors. They both of them have number of doors. They both of them have year of creation. Uh, but the values of these properties will be different. So an object in JavaScript is just another way to define a variable which has set of properties with set of values. Now let's jump into the code and see how we can create this object and how we can play around with them. Now let's create our first object and let's start with the most easiest and most common method which is object literal. So the way we can do that, we just start with declaring as we do usually uh, a variable. So I'll make it a const at the moment and const. So I'm declaring my variable. Then I will create uh, the name of that variable. Let's create say car object, for example. Okay. Then I have equal sign to assign it. And then it comes the difference, right? Until now, you may know already how to assign a Boolean how to assign uh, a string, how to assign a number. But for the object, you start with a curly braces. And then inside those curly braces, you can put your properties and their values. So open and close curly braces, right? And then you can put uh, your property name. And let's start, for example, saying uh, color of the car, right? And let's all say color red. So my car uh, color is red. Let's, for example, say um, maker. And let's say it's Toyota. Okay. And let's say, for example, it have doors, like number of doors. And let's say it have four doors. You see here it's given error. That's because I forgot a comma here. So basically, um, you need a pair of properties and values. And then you put a comma here. So this is your property name. This is its value, comma, and so on. Okay. Now we say, okay, how we can access this object details or properties? Let's say, for example, I have an application 
I just want to display to the customer the maker of this car. Okay, the way we can do that, I will use now just printing in the console. So cancel cancel.log and I will save my object name, right? The one I declared here, that's my variable. Then I'll make a dot and then you pick up the property name. Let's say maker. Now let's hit enter, uh, save. And you can see here in my console, it printed Toyota, okay? Now let's give another example. Let's say I want to access the door. So again, my object name dot and the property name, which is doors. Click save. And you can see here it's printed for me for, okay? So this is one way of accessing your object. There is another method as well. So again, console.log and my object name, car object. But now we will do it this way, brackets, code, and then you put your property name. And let's say for example, this time again, maker. Click save and you can see it's Toyota. Okay, so these are two different ways you can access your object properties. Now, let's create some little bit more complex object. Okay, so we used um, an object which is pair of properties with strings and numbers. You can also do something like this. Um, let's say ranges, I don't know, auto ranges. So sometimes they do pricing of the cars depending on the odometer. So I can just say, for example, it's an array, okay? And I can say, for example, the value first of from zero to 1,000, um, 1,001 to 2,000, okay? So you can have also an array inside your object, okay? As a value of a property. Also, you can have another object, okay? And what can be example of that? Um, let's say for example seats, okay? And these seats will be an object, okay? And these seats have, for example, is leather, okay? <laughs> um, this is true. Let's say the color of the seats, for example, I would say it's the white, okay? Um, let's say for example, um, he is heated, right, and let's say uh, it's pre-bullion to be false, okay? So, this is another example of your object. So, an object can be set of properties, and these properties, they can have values, which can be string, can be boolean, can be an array, and can be also another object. And let's say, for example, we want to access this odometer range, and want to access this first value, right? I can do like this, again cancel log and I can say my object which is car object dot so that's how I access my property or the range and it's an array and I want to access the first value so zero because uh, the indexing start from zero so this one is zero position this is one position okay and save and you can see here I was able to access that one now another thing you can do with objects in javascript which most probably if you come back from an object oriented language background like c sharp or, or another or java you will not be able to do that but in javascript you can do it for example i declared my object already right and it have this set of properties it have color it have maker doors other ranges and also seats i can come later in my app and i add another property for example car object I can do dot for example model okay and I will say for example Camry oops Camry okay and I will see can so log this and see if I can find it car object dot model save and it came here and you see there is no error or anything complain about me doing this even though this model is not defined first time in my car object. As you can see here, it's not there. But I was able later to come here and do this. And this only you can do it in JavaScript. And it's something amazing, but also it can be scary sometimes if your app is growing and 
um, you just lose track of the types of your objects. But yeah, you just have to keep in mind this is another way and it's possible you can just come like this without doing the full extended notation. You can just have your car or your, sorry, your object name dot and you put your property name and then assign a value. Okay. Now let's see how we can add methods to our object. Now let's just remove this first. We clean up this a bit and now let's declare our first method and let's say for example uh, let's call it is new so is the car new okay um, and that will give it a function and for now let's keep it simple I'll just say console log yeah it is new okay so basically what we did here, we just declared again um, a function. So you can see here, these ones are properties, but these ones are called functions, okay? Two column and then again, just write your function here as you usually do, okay? And I'll save this. And what I will do, I'll see how I can access now my function, right? We did before for properties. Let's see how we can access our function. So console log, oops, not there. Cancel log and I will do my car object dot is new. Okay? And you are triggering the function, the kind of function. Save and you can see here. Yes, it is new. Okay? Now we're having here an error. So the 12, you can see here. The 12, it is logging off, but 15, it is throwing an error. And that's because I don't need to add cancel log here. Because this function is not returning anything. It's by itself uh, giving me a cancel log. So all what I have to do is just trigger the function. Save, and there it is. Now, let's learn something about shorthand declarations in JavaScript. So basically it's another way to make your objects look more readable and beautiful. So how does it work? Let's say for example, we have some big application and this function is very big function, which does a lot of logic, okay? So the way it will be, you will not declare it in here like we did here. For example, you declare it before, and let's say I give it the same name, okay? Is new, oops is new okay and that will be a function which does this for us okay so either I can do this to call it off I can say okay my method my object will be assigned this right or I can for example because it's same name you see the same spelling everything same I can just do this and my JavaScript will understand it. And this is called shorthand declaration. Okay, I'll come again here to prove that's working. My object dot is new, and I should see my log. And you see, I can see it there. Okay, same thing. For example, let's say before I had const color equal red equal red okay and i can come here and do this okay this red will be this variable here okay or because again same name i can just do shorthand declaration we should be like this okay and to still work and if i do here again cancel log this property car object dot color I should see red coming. See, it's working. Now, let's say, for example, in a big application in real time, and you have this object um, that you want to inspect. We want to see what properties it has, for example, right? Um, there are different ways we can do that in JavaScript. The first one is using a built-in object within JavaScript, which its name is object with double O, and it's like this, object, 
okay and this one have few properties that you can use and one of them is keys okay and this keys accepts one parameter which is the object as you can see here my visual studio code is helping me so let's pass it um our object name which is car object okay and let's cancel log this one cancel log object which is built in object in javascript with capital o okay dot keys and then you pass your object name and this one should give me a list all of the properties names so you can see a color maker doors other ranges sees and is new so all these names here are printed for me okay now let's say for example you want also the values you want a list of values within this object okay so cancel.log and we have again object which is built in javascript dot values this time okay and it accepts one parameter which is your object itself so it's my scenario it is car object click save and you can see here i have to list all the values in my object by order so you have the color red you have toyota you have four then you have an array and then you have your seats okay which is an object itself and then you have the last one is new which is the function okay good now these are way first way using built-in objects within javascript there is another way you can do that using for in loop okay so the way it work is we can do for let okay uh, let's say property name and you can call this anything you want property name in okay and in then we put the object name car object okay and let's for example cancel log our uh, properties name so property name save and you can see here it's printing for me all the names okay now let's say if I want the value of these properties to be printed okay as an example now we do our object name okay but we can't do this we need to do bracket and then you put this property name there okay save and then you have again list of the values of your property now what we can do dot but we have to do brackets because if you remember if you do dot and property name it will search for this value in there okay like actually property name like this okay something but we don't have that property right we want actually the actual property name right that's why we can't use that dot in this scenario we need to use the brackets okay and this can be very helpful for example let's say i want to print the details of the car right i can say for example cancel log um let's say the property name okay then we can print its values as well and then plus okay so here for example you have here okay my color of the car is red the make is toyota the doors is four the other ranges is this and so on okay so this is another way you can access um the property names and also the properties values in your object within javascript now let's talk about object equality so if you know already in javascript you have few operators which can help you to compare the equality of variables so the first one is double equal and the second one is the triple equal and there's a third one which is object is okay and this one accept two arguments uh, variable one and variable two and it compares them for you okay now let's go through them the first one is most and and safe one let's say that okay and the reason why is it doesn't check the types of your uh, variables and i'll explain what that means for example if i say cancel log and compare for me the string 13 to the number 13 
So for you in your mind, that should give false, right? But with double equal, it will give true, as you can see in my log. So when you're using double equal, it's just checking the value, it's not checking the type of those values. I'll give you another scenario as well. Let's say, for example, if we compare uh, an empty string, okay, to number zero. That also will come back true. Let's say if we cancel log again and compare null to undefined. And surprisingly, also this one will be true, okay? So when you use the double equal sign, that is not a safe comparison and that is not really uh, recommended to do except some special scenarios where really for example i don't know you have a price coming from api as a string and you know it should be a number you compare to a number or something like that okay now if we copy this and we try to do same but with the triple equal so the triple equal it is a type safe it will compare for you all the types of the variables as well okay and this one see they all come as false because of course a string 13 is not a number 13 an empty string is not a zero and null is not undefined so for this one okay that's not recommended for this two they are actually doing the same work triple uh, equal signs and object dot is does the same work there are only two differences between them the first one is not a number and if you don't know what is a not a number not a number is like um when you give for example a string and check if it's number it will tell you no it's not a number okay it's just a way of saying that a variable is not a number so if we do for example cancel log not a number triple equal not a number this one will give us false okay which shouldn't be it should be true okay because they are the same but if you use the object that is that is and i'll say not a number and again not a number save And let's cancel log this one. Uh, cancel dot log, and that one is coming true. Okay, so that's first scenario uh, where they're different. Okay, scenario one. Now the second scenario where they behave differently is when they compare um, a plus zero <laughs> to minus zero, and you say, okay, does it? Is there any plus zero minus zero yes in mathematics there is plus zero and there is minus zero and in this where also these two methods also have different outcomes if you use a triple equal that will give it a true but if you use object dot is then it will give it a false other than that these two methods are the safest one and they have the same behaviors okay now let's go into our object so if we compare objects, objects are a bit different than standard variables. Let's say I create the object one. Okay, I'll copy the same thing. I'll just call it object two. Okay, and if I cancel log object one, oops, not that. Cancel log car object is equal. I'm using also the type safe one car object two. It's giving me false okay even though everything inside is the same same thing will happen with the object that is car object and car object 2 so also this one will get false and the reason why is when you come to compare objects uh, in JavaScript it doesn't compare the values because if you see they're not actually values they have properties and their values so what is comparing the scenario it's comparing their address location where these variables are stored in the memory okay not like in other scenarios when you have a standard variables like a boolean or string or number it's comparing their values not their location or their memory address okay 
So that's good out of the way. Now let's see how we can use this inside the method. So let's have an example of is new, okay? But we want to access one of these values inside that function. How we can do that? Now, let's see if you want to, for example, create a function or a method in this object, okay? And in this object, I want it, for example, to print me um, this car, color, maker, model, and it's also the year, okay? So for this, first we have to add the year, because we don't have this property. And let's say this car was made in 2000. And now let's create our function and let's call it, for example, let's call it print car details, for example, okay? And we want for this function to access these object values for us and print them there. And the way we can do that is using the this keyword. So the this keyword will refer, in our case here, to the object itself. And the way we can see that we can do again console.log and let's say we want to print um, the maker first for example so we do like this and we do this okay and like i say this refers to our object right dot maker for example okay and then we can see for example again this and let's print the model i don't have here the model so i'll just add model camry and i'll say here model and i'll say for example this one was made in this year so this again dot here okay save and it gives me an error here and it says unexpected identifier and in lane 8 so you can see it's red and that's because i forgot a comma here after i define my new property click save and i didn't see this one coming off because i didn't trigger my function so i have to come here let me move this second object we don't need this anymore and let's do car object and dot print car details and it's giving me and defined for all of them and the reason why it happened like this here we use a new syntax of using functions called arrow function so arrow function they behave a bit differently so if you want to access the this inside an object we need to use a normal function declaration. So I'll use function and remove this arrow from here. And that should work. Click save and you can see. So this is working. So remember when you're having an object and you're creating a method, and inside that method, you want to access the object properties or other methods. You need to use a normal function declaration for that method to be able to access the object via the this keyword now let's see if you want for example to copy this object into other one okay so there are few methods but the most uh, proper one is using uh, object.assign so let me remove this remove all this as well we don't need it Now, the way we can do that, we can have, for example, we declare another variable, const, and let's say car object 2, and we can say this one is equal um, empty object, and we can say object with capital O, object dot assign. And we can put our car object to, and then we say, okay, we want to copy all these properties here in this car object into the first one. So car object. 
and then let's cancel log our second object and you can see it have all the details we had in the previous one so the way object.assign works it just take whatever uh, objects on the right and copy all of them in the first one okay and let's say a scenario for example let's say now we have car details and let's say we have another um, object which is called car const accident details for example if the car is end accidental okay and let's say for example we have location um, damage level for example uh, so this is a little bit damage which is two for example location let's say sydney um let's say for example uh insurance name for example just a test and let's say we want at some point in your application you want an object um, which can have all these details together in one because they're all related to the same car okay so you can come here and do for example object dot assign and we want to match these details into this one so car object then comma then the second one accident details okay and let's cancel log now our object car object and you can see here now it have our old details but also have the new details and this is the same object we created first sign and all what we have done is just add some details extra into it okay maybe at some point in your app you want to dis display all those details or do something with them now this creates one issue for us. In some scenarios, of course, you, you want to match up this object. You want to make them together in one, but you don't want to change the original object. Okay? So how we can do that? So there is another way we can do it. Uh, let's say, for example, const um, full car details, for example. And we can make this one as an empty object okay and what we will do here in object to assign i'll say assign all these objects into this one as you remember before i said the object that assigned what it does or how it works it take all um, parameters on the right and put them all in the first parameter so what i'm saying is take my first one which is now empty and put into it the car object and also the accident details and now i'll keep printing this to make sure it didn't get impacted and i'll also try to print the new one we created and this is the first one so you can see nothing has changed so our object still nice and clean and safe and the second one we created it have both the first one and the second one so you have the auto, the color, and you see damage level, insurance, location, doors, so all together in once. So this is a way when you start working with objects, if you want to put them together or make copies of them, you use object.assign. Now let's say for example, um, you have this object, but at some point in your app, maybe you did some changes, some calculations. And you want to delete one of those properties you don't want it anymore to exist there so the way you can delete a property or a method in an object is very easy and straightforward delete and car object that's my object dot you put your property name or um on property and this one accept one argument and that is your property or your method name so i want to check if seats still exist click save and you can see here it's giving me false because we deleted it if i do that before i delete then that should be a true so you can see a true here and then a false here so this is a way or a method which can uh, can be very helpful when you're building applications 
to check within some property that exists or not yet. And mostly it's like when you're doing manipulations or API calls and so on. Now, let's talk about something which is much more fun and a little bit not a um, usual thing and doesn't look like things we did before. And that is the structuring an object in JavaScript. Now, that's how does that work? So what the idea is, for example, you have an object, right? And you have a lot of properties, a lot of methods. But sometimes, you know, you just want to access like one property or a couple of them. And that value you'll be using through your application everywhere, right? So if you're using that through your application everywhere, uh, let's have, for example, scenario an API, which comes back with a large response, but you only need two values in that response, right? So you need to pull them out and then use them through your application instead of dragging all that full object everywhere in your application. So that's when the structuring comes and it's kind of really, really helpful. And the way it works is we declare a new variable, but that's inside a curly brace, okay? So let's say we want maker. So I'm distracting the maker out of my car object. So I'm taking maker, okay? But under a variable name, so this will be your var name, your new variable name, you're declaring it now, okay? Let's say my car maker, okay? Name for example, and then that's coming out for my car object, okay? If I cancel log my new variable, which is uh, my car maker name, I should see it here, Toyota, okay? So how it works, you declare a new variable, that is your new variable name, and what you're doing, you are, um, pulling out or destructing this car object, but taking only the maker. We're only taking the maker out of my car object and assign it to a new variable, which is called my car maker name. Sometimes, for example, um, you don't have this maker in your app anywhere else, so you can use the same name, and that will take us back to the shorthand. If you remember earlier in this video, we were talking about it. So I can do this, just remove this one. So this what we'll do, for example, like I'm saying maker and implement it or assign it to a new variable called maker. Okay. I can do that too because I don't have anything here in upper scope which have a variable name maker. So I can use that. Now if I do this, you'll see this is Toyota again. So basically I created a new variable and I'm assigning it a maker property from the car object. And because these two are the same spelling, I can do the shorthand, which is like this. So basically this one's saying, it take for me maker from car object and assign it to a new variable named maker as well. If I save, and that works. So this one looks much cleaner and much um, readable, if, most if you have some big applications you're building. And that take us again if you want to extract more. So I can extract, for example, color. I can do, for example, doors. Okay. So this one is like, um, it's like I'm saying, make for me um, in new variable maker. Here I'm saying a new variable called color. And see, here it's giving me error. And reason why? Because I have a color here in upper scope, right? So I can't use that one. I'll just remove this because that was one example for us before. And I'll just do here red. And here you like you're saying again, uh, take for me doors and assign it to a new doors variable. And this is looks long, right? Because we have many. So again, I'll just do shorthand, keep them single, and I'll cancel log and prove you that's working. So and I have here doors. So you can see all is coming through. 